news just hit from the association with the final play-in tournament games tonight. Um, a play-in tournament that we all thought um, the Mavericks wouldn't be in because one of the Western Conference final participants from last year was performing so well at the trade deadline that they went ahead and got Kyrie Irving to add to the mix with Luka, and this team would just take straight off and maybe even wind up in a spot hosting a first-round playoff game. And instead, they found themselves on the Friday night before the play-in tournament field was set, the Friday leading into the final weekend of the NBA season, pulling the plug and yanking everyone out and putting Luca out though for the first quarter at least that was a nice little fig leaf <laughs> hey fans you get to see Luca for one quarter and then we're pulling him you know why that was no it was Slovenia night that night oh is that what it was so he had like he had to get out there could you imagine had he not played <laughs> well you don't want to leave all those people from Slovenia who are coming yeah so he actually empty handed and so the NBA said they were doing an investigation mm -hmm. I guess the investigation's over. The league announcing that they fined the organization in Dallas $750,000 for conduct detrimental to the league in an elimination game against the Chicago Bulls on April 7th. They said the Ma uh, Mavericks violated the league's player resting policy <laughs> and demonstrated through actions and public statements the organization's desire to lose the game in order to prove the chances of keeping its first round pick in the upcoming draft. The league did not find that the players who participated in the game were not playing to win. That is true. There was a, if I'm not mistaken, a three that uh, was launched at the end of this game. They, they, they damn near won it. They were up by double digits in that game in the third quarter. I saw a video. I forgot who launched the three, but it, it was to potentially tie it or go ahead at the end. And they showed Mark Cuban on the on the floor in his floor seats, kind of like smiling, like couldn't believe that he was in this situation. I'm sure he hated it, too. Uh, there's one final paragraph I'd like to read to everybody. The Dallas Mavericks decision to restrict key players from fully participating in an elimination game last Friday against Chicago undermined the integrity of our sport, said Joe Dumars, NBA executive vice president, head of basketball operations. The Mavericks actions failed our fans and our league, end quote. Of all the things the NBA has done this year to fail the fans in the league, this is at the bottom. I would start with the officiating. It's been awful this year. Time and time again, we see it. And the fact that that's not being addressed whatsoever just tells you everything you need to know. Well, as you know, I have been riding this horse of player resting load management, injury management, taking players who are a year away from being injured, having come back, and managing everything to the point where, you know, they have to sit out a game in December because they hurt themselves two Junes prior, and it's the end of a back-to-back -back trip. Or it's the first end of a back-to-back -back trip, and they're making sure they, have, they play at least the next night. I had no idea there was a player resting policy. And what the Mavericks did last week was embarrassing. Embarrassing. And uh, again, it's not a decision I'm sure they took lightly at all. I'm sure everybody will agree. However you feel about Mark Cuban, I happen to like him. Um, that he's a competitive SOB, and the last thing he wants to do is lay down. But the idea that they didn't want to try and make the 9-10 game, they didn't want to go on the road to face the Pelicans and win that game, and they could be the ones taking on the Timberwolves tonight with Kyrie and Luka and the rest of that team, they don't. you don't think that they could win those games and get in in that manner, win those games, and go to Denver – do you think Denver would want to see that Mavericks team strolling in as the eighth seed on Sunday as the final game of the first weekend of the NBA playoffs first round? You could sit there and say that they played terrible the last two, three weeks, and sure, you'll, you'd rather take them than a Thunder team. 
that doesn't know what they don't know or a Timberwolves team that can put it all together and really make your life miserable. But the Mavericks said the idea of making this play in tournament and going on a run to get to a first round series against either the Grizzlies or the Nuggets wasn't worth it when it would cost them their first round selection in next year's draft because it would be out of the top 10. And if they just laid down, they'd be in the top 10. And interestingly enough, if one of the teams that's below them actually wins the lottery for Victor Wembayama or winds up in the two or the three spot, then the Mavericks, with all of this, would wind up out of the top 10. They would lose their first-round pick to the Knicks anyway. Then they wouldn't have tried to make this play-in tournament, and they would have lost a three-quarters of a million dollars on top of it. And all the embarrassment that comes with it, because this is embarrassing. Especially since, again, that game against the Bulls that night, they were up by double digits in the third <laughs> quarter. And interestingly enough, the Bulls came back and won that game uh, with nobody uh, uh, screeching underneath the basket while the Mavericks are shooting free throws. Interesting that the Bulls can come back from double digits down in a game they have to win. Yeah, super weird. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> And my pushback, however, on all this is how, I guess, the Mavericks did it too obviously. They did it too in your face. Yeah, it snubbed their nose. Because, again, yeah. you want to talk about laying down on playing tournament weekend and how that affects things and how it brings about a competitive embarrassment for the league. Tell me what this lineup was that I took uh, my son to go see on Saturday, Clippers and uh, Tim, uh, uh, Blazers. Tell me about that Blazer lineup right there on your screen. The one that they yeah, were putting that. out there on the court for a couple of weeks with my son walking through the parking garage with me to crypto saying, Dad, are we going to see Damian Lillard today? Which was kind of a surprise to me that he would ask that question because he's so locked in on fantasy basketball and he knows Lillard hasn't been playing for a couple of weeks. Because the Blazers pulled the plug on their season. What about Grant? What about the rest of that team? What about all their starters? Where the hell have they been for the last couple weeks? You know what they've been doing. That plug was pulled mid-March, late March. That's when the, the Blazers pulled that plug. Yep. What about that team? Did they get fined? What about the Pistons? They were tanking from jump, it felt like. The minute Cunningham went out for the year. Yeah. They don't get fined? You know, if you're going to find teams for tanking, Rich, right, then maybe they should do the opposite. Because we all thought at the beginning of the season that the Utah Jazz were already, like, building a, a custom-made bed for Victor. Right, Brockman? Like, beginning of the season, mm -hmm. Jazz were going to suck. They were going to be the worst team. And the Jazz fought – all season. So Until they stopped. Lowry Markinen had a hand injury that caused him to miss several games down the stretch. Yeah. Okay. But the Jazz the Jazz played it by half. They did. They did. And I thought personally, I thought the Thunder were were they sat SGA a few times in the final couple weeks of the season. I thought they were gonna try and pull what the Mavericks did, what the Blazers did. And what the Jazz eventually did, Jazz came close. Jazz gave it a nice run. Yeah, I mean, they won 37 games when I think... Jazz they, gave it a nice run, and I thought that they were going to actually make the playoffs. I thought they'd be in a play-in game for sure. It looked that way for a Until while. they pulled the plug, which they did. Which they did. They sent Conley to Minnesota. They sent Beasley to Los Angeles. And Larry Markin and had a back, and then he had hands. He had, the, he had Jazz hands. <laughs> Of course, I'm not in their trainer room. I'm not in their training room or in their board rooms. That's the whole point is just, you know, kind of look to me that a lot of teams did what the Mavericks eventually decided to do. Just a different ball of wax, though. It's the Friday before the last game of the season. You made a big splash of a trade. You got one of the best players on planet Earth, two of them, together. 
you're also essentially saying, you know what? We have to protect the team. We have to protect the first round draft choice. Jason Kidd said before the game, you know, this has come down from management. He was asked, do you agree with it? He's like, well, my bosses say it's what needs to be done. So, yeah, I agree with it. Luca says, I don't like it. It's just way out there in front of everybody's view. But what else is out there in front of everybody's view is, again, I saw on a screen above an NBA court in Los Angeles on Saturday when everyone's like, here are your starting five for the Portland Trailblazers. <laughs> And it's just like, really? <laughs> yeah. Because that looks to me like I just strolled into a G League with all due respect to those five professionals. And Sharp was terrific towards the end of the, the, end of the season. And he's a keeper. Kevin Knox a second can light it up. He had a double-double that day. I mean, I, I understand. But that's, that's not the Portland Trailblazer team that they're hoping to build a championship with. So that's not findable? That's not final. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.